go. Nyko press sleeves are wonderful things, but we all know that professionally made cables are terminated uh, without Nyko press sleeves. And they're terminated with a, a swage fitting. This would be something like you'd find on a Cessna or a Piper aircraft. And uh, it looks a lot nicer than a Nyko press cable, and it'll also go through a much smaller area than a Nyko press cable will. How can we put one of those on? Uh, unfortunately, the answer is for most people, you can't because you don't have one of these Kearney swaging machines. Um, but uh, we do have one of the Kearney swaging machines, and if you work in a large shop, you will possibly have access to one of these. So let's look at how you apply a uh, swaged cable fitting. This fitting fits onto the end of a turnbuckle. Okay, this is the standard uh, left-hand thread, um, but uh, when, we, when we apply this fitting, what we're going to do is we're going to swage it down on top of our cable. So the cable goes down inside the fitting. Have to make sure you cut the cable well or it won't, do, it won't go in there. We bottom it inside the fitting, and now what we're going to need to do is squeeze the length of that barrel. And squeezing the length of that barrel is no small uh, uh, no small feet, particularly in a way that we can make sure to check that it has been done properly. But this swaging machine will do the job. Okay, these dies have a circular channel inside them, deliberately built to swage that down. And we're going to load our barrel in into the dies, slide the slide so that it maintains a nice straight path for our uh, for our barrel end, and now. Load the cable onto the barrel end, make sure it bottoms, set the cable here, and this, this guide, some people skip the guide, but the guide makes sure that everything stays straight. And now what we're ready to do is just simply move our, uh, move our, um, our handles back and forth. I've got it just, there we are. And this is going to pull everything in and it's going to swage the cable down. Okay, there's quite a lot of rolling resistance when I go to do this. Let's see if we can come around and get a real close-up view of what this looks like. This is one pass through. You'll notice that I've squeezed the barrel down, but you'll also notice that where the two dies came together, there's still a line across here. One pass is not enough with this uh, Kearney swaging machine. So what I need to do is reload everything into the machine one more time. Okay, and to do that, I'm going to spin my dies around to reset them. I'm going to slide everything into position, and I'm going to make sure that that line that was between the two cables is now spaced 90 degrees so that it's going to be properly swaged. I'm going to set my dies into the neutral position I'm going to retract my cable right back to where it was, and now we're going to swage it one more time. This time is much easier than the last time was, but that pulls everything through. And two passes is all it takes with the swaging machine. Spin my cape and my dies so that I can release the cable, pull the cable loose, and we have a professionally swaged cable. The only thing we have left to do is check it with the Go No Go gauge. This is our Go No Go gauge, and you'll see that it has across here a spot for balls and a spot for sleeves. We just did a sleeve, and we put the sleeve onto an eighth-inch cable. Okay, we should be able to slide the sleeve into the slot for the eighth-inch cable. And when that sleeve slides into the spot for the eighth-inch cable we know that we have adequately compressed our sleeve and we have a good, completely professionally done joint.